Welcome back. So let's now finish up this section by implementing one more feature, which is the ability for people to vote on facts. Now before we do that, we very quickly need to fix one small thing here, which is that actually setting these facts in a last lecture should only happen in case that there is no error. So we simply do what we already did before in the app component, which is if no error, then we do this. Because otherwise, if there is an error, new fact will become null, and then here we are adding null to the array, which we do not want. So that was just a quick fix. But anyway, let's now move on to the fact component, because it's in this fact component where we have the buttons for voting. So these three buttons, right? Now, in order to start with this feature, I will start by only creating a function that works for uh, voting here on this interesting. So only for this button, basically. So let's come here to this component, to fact component, and here I will create a new function. So function handle vote. Okay. And then here in this button is where we will actually add this function as the event handler function. So just like before, let's write on click and then handle vote. All right. And so then when the button is clicked, as always, React will call this function for us. And I created a separate function here and not directly an arrow function here because we will need multiple lines of code to do this. Okay, and actually let's again go to our API here. So the API documentation. So in the previous lecture, we inserted rows and now we want to update rows. So this is here how we do it. Now just make sure once again that you have the row level security policies set up. So again, we come here to authentication and then policies. So for what we did in the previous lecture and in this one, it's paramount that you have this uh, insert policy and also this update policy. Without these two, the previous feature and this feature are not going to work. So we did this in the super base section, but I just wanted to make sure that you have everything set up in place. And so now we can uh, come back down here and learn how we can update a row because basically that's what we need to do, right? So each of these facts here has these properties and when we vote on one of them, so when we click here, we want to update this fact from 10 to 11 upvotes. So interesting votes in this case. So let's again write our query. So super base and let's come back here and again take our facts table And now we write update. And here we now need to specify an object which contains the new value for a certain property. So we want to update this votes interesting. And so what we say, it's votes interesting, which is the name of the property, should be basically the current votes interesting plus one. So the current value for these votes interesting is in fact dot votes interesting. So that's what we have down here, right? So let's copy that. Plus one. Okay. But now, of course, we also need to tell Superbase which fact should actually get updated. Because right now we are not doing that anywhere. So Superbase would have no way of knowing which of all our facts in the table should be the one to update. So we need to again use the EQ filter and basically what we're looking for is to update the fact where the ID is equal to fact.id. So basically to the current ID of the fact. So this ID is the unique identification and so this is useful for now selecting exactly the fact that should be updated. And just like in the last lecture, we now also want to select this fact from Superbase 
so that we can then also update our local facts state array. Okay, so we have our query in place. We need to await it. Therefore, this needs to be an async function. By now you are getting used to it. So you are already getting better at using a sync await function, which is something very important in JavaScript. And here we get data and error. And again, I want to rename the data that we get. So let's call it an updated fact. And here, of course, we're missing the equal sign. And yeah, this should already be working, actually. So let's get the updated fact that we get back and log it to the console. Okay. Let's go to our console, reload just to make sure. Let's click. It takes some time, of course. And then here is the new fact. So let's open it up and let's see if votes interesting is at 11. And yeah, down here we can already see that. Nice. So that worked just fine. But now it's time to also update the user interface. So right now the only way to seeing the new value would be to manually reload the page. But that's of course not what we want. So we also want to update our local uh, facts array. So that state variable. So let's do that. And just like before, let's do it only if there was no error. So if there was no error, we need to set facts. So how do we do that? Well, just like before, we want to set the new facts based on the current facts. Right, so we need to use this function here. And now here is where it becomes a bit tricky. So this will be quite confusing here. So let's understand what we need to return here. Because again, whatever we return from this function will be the new state. So before, when we wanted to add a new element to the array, we did like this. So we returned a new array with the old array spread out and then the updated fact or the new fact before. But now this is not what we want. We do not want to return a new array that is bigger than the previous one. So instead, we want to return an array that has exactly the same size as before. So if we had 11 facts before the upvote, then we now uh, also want to have only 11 facts. And so therefore, the map method is a good candidate for that. Because again, map creates a new array with the same length as before. So facts.map, and now in here, let's call each of the facts f to make it a bit less confusing, because otherwise we would have multiple uh, facts here. So let's try to avoid that. Now remember that in the map method for each array element we need to return the value that should be at that position in the new array. So let me write the code here and I will then explain uh, why I did it. So if f.id, so if the id of the current fact in the array is equal to the id of the fact that we are updating, then we want to actually return the updated fact. So in a new array, instead of the old fact object, we want the updated fact object. But if not, so for all the other facts, so all the other objects where the IDs are not the same, there we want to simply return the original one. Okay. So first we need to fix this error and then I will explain a little bit better why this works. So it says us that set facts is not defined and so the reason for that is that we are not passing it as a uh, as a prop yet. So let's do that. So set facts comes all the way from the top from the app component. So right here. So set facts and so we need to pass it into the facts list. Where is that? Uh, right here. So let's write set facts equal set facts. And now we go to facts list and accept the props there. 
so that then we can pass it into fact. So we are now passing this set facts function through multiple children in the component tree. So facts list, where is that? Yeah, so let's accept that here. And we only need sets fact or set facts. <laughs> so we only need this function here so that we can then immediately pass it into the fact. And this is what we call uh, prop drilling. Okay, and finally let's accept it here as well. Okay, and now we can use it. So let's see if this works. And then we can again try to understand a bit better what this does. So let's see. Let's click. Uh, well, something is wrong here. So what do we have? Now, first of all, each child needs to have a unique key, uh, but that doesn't matter because here I can immediately see what is wrong. So this updated fact is an array with the object inside of it. So just like before in the previous lecture. So what we need to do here is not updated fact, but updated fact at position zero. So basically retrieving uh, the object out of the array. So let's reload. And you see that it did update on Superbase because it's at 12. But now let's click again. And yeah, that worked. So now that's 13 and it updated both on Superbase and in our local state here. Great. So again, we defined the new facts state here by creating a new array. And that new array is of course based on the initial array. So on the original one before the state update. And so when we loop over the array, we are basically looking for the object where the ID is exactly the one that we are currently updating. And so if that is the current object, then we will replace the current object with the updated fact object. And for all the other ones, we simply want to keep the same one, so the original. So for example, for this fact, we don't want to change anything here. And so we simply return that F here. Okay, so that is working nice, but now we also need some way of preventing the user from clicking here multiple times while the fact is still being updated. So we can do that. And that's not causing some big issues here, but that's probably also because my internet connection is pretty fast. So we want it so that when the user clicks here, they see that they are actually clicking here right now, so that something is happening. All right, so we basically want to do the same thing as we did before. So creating a state variable that we can then use to disable the button while something is being done. So let's say is updating and set is updating. Use state and the initial value is of course false. And then just like before, immediately before the updating happens on the server, so on Superbase, we set is updating to true. All right, and I'm noticing here I have a bug. So is, up, is updating, so not a bug, but a typo. And then here immediately afterwards, we can immediately then set is updating to false. All right, and then we use that information down here to disable the button. So that's right, oh, yeah, right here. I wasn't seeing that. So disabled is equal to is updating. And so now we can no longer click multiple times, right? However, we cannot really see that the button is disabled. And so we can actually add some style for that. And that's easier than it sounds. So let me open up the CSS file and you should do the same. And so let's come down here to where we defined these buttons. Yeah, that's right here. So vote buttons button. So this is how we select the button. And here is how we defined that hover that a special background color where it becomes dark, right? 
So this hover is a so-called pseudo class, remember? And in CSS, there is also a pseudo class that we can use for when the button is disabled. So let me actually show you here. So this is quite interesting. Let's inspect this here. And what, what happens here on this button as I click? So you see, it says disabled. And now it's gone and the value updated. And so we can here now again style that status. So just copy that and here instead of hover, just do disabled. And so let's give it now the same background color as the rest uh, here of this list item, which is the 44 something. Yeah, so just this. Give it a save, click again, and you see that looked quite disabled, right? All right, so we fixed that issue as well. Let's close that down. And so we are now actually done with this button right here. So these buttons are working and they should be working everywhere. Yeah, that worked. And so now we need to take care of these other two votes. So how could we do that? So the functionality for these two uh, votes here will be basically exactly the same. The only thing that will be different will be here this field that will be updated and also the current value. But everything else will be the same. All this logic here simply is exactly the same. So what should we do? Should we copy and paste this function two times and uh, give it different names? Well, there's actually a better way. So instead of doing that, we can pass a string into this function and then we use that string to update here. So let me first show you what I mean by using that string. So first of all, we could write this fact.votes interesting in a different way. So we could put these uh, curly braces and then put this in quotes and here without the dot. So remember how we did this in the previous JavaScript section. So this is just another way in which we can retrieve uh, some property from an object. And the same thing is actually true here. So here to actually define the property, we can do the same. We can do these uh, brackets and then a string with the property name. And so please go ahead and change your code to this and you will see that it will work exactly the same. And so what we can do now is to basically give this function this string here dynamically. So each of the buttons will give this function the string that it wants to update. So let's copy this one here to the first one. So we pass in this here, but we don't want to call the function. Remember, we want to actually define a function. So we need to again create here these parentheses, the arrow, so that this is actually an arrow function. And here it needs to be a, a string, as I was saying earlier. All right. And so now here, this one actually needs to return this string. And let's call it the column or column name, because in the database, each of these fields basically is called a column of the table. And so now we can replace this string simply with column name. All right, and so let's test that once again. And indeed that worked. So we now have it working exactly the same way. And all we have to do is to now generalize this functionality for the other two buttons. So let's copy all of this, edit in here and in here. And now all we need to do is to change here the name of these columns. So this one is called the votes mind blowing. And here this one is called the votes false. And so now once we click this button, this false button, for example, then this string gets passed into our handle vote function. And so then column name will become votes false. And then here we get that votes false should be uh, the current votes false in this current fact plus one. 
And so by doing this, we generalized this one function for all our three buttons. Let's check that. And beautiful. So we can now vote on all the buttons all the time. And you see that actually all of them get disabled, which makes a lot of sense. So when we click one of them, of course, we shouldn't be able to click any of them. So really, really nice. And with this, we did actually finish this section. There's a few more very small things that we are going to do, but we will do that in the next section. And also in that next section, we will then deploy this project to the internet. So we will upload it to some server and then you can share it with the world. So that's going to be a lot of fun once again.